Peggy 18. Hey everyone, I'm Joel Leschler, producer from 2K Australia. Hi everyone, I'm James Lopez, producer at Gearbox Software. And we're here to show you a walkthrough of our E3 demo for Borderlands the Presequel. Hope you enjoy it. Alright, so uh, we're actually going to be playing through as Wilhelm during this playthrough and uh, we're selecting his action skill now which is his ability to uh, spawn these two drones, Wolf and Saint. Wolf is an attacking drone while Saint is more of a, a buffing regen drone. Uh, we're going to go down uh, the Cyber Commando skill tree. This one's really cool because if, if fans remember Wilhelm from Borderlands 2, he was just a, a giant loader with a human head on top. But in this game, it's his origin story and he starts out just as a man. But you have the ability by going down this skill tree to start turning him into that giant robot that he was in Borderlands 2. We're selecting the Power Fist skill here and you'll see that it actually replaced his arm with this robotic one. This one's really cool because it'll deal extra melee damage and you can actually uh, attack enemies from further away. And if you look at the uh, Shock Absorbers one, which uh, replaces his leg with a robotic leg. This allows you to shoot and reload while you're sprinting, which can come in really handy. The Meteor Slam is also uh, really useful because uh, the butt stomp or ground pound or, or slam or whatever we're calling it today uh, is really, really powerful in Borderlands per sequel. When you're playing in low gravity, you're able to do this huge amount of damage when you slam down to the ground. And that's about all the skill points we can use right now, uh, but we're pretty close to leveling up again. So when we do, we're going to show you uh, the Vengeance Cannon, which is uh, Wilhelm's capstone skill inside the Cyber Commando tree. Yeah. We have a look here, we actually just uh, shot an air geyser, and when these are shot, they shoot out this oxygen, which replenishes your Oz kit, but it also propels you up in the air. And the higher you get, uh, the more damage you can do from your butt stomp. So uh, if you hold that crouch button, you slam down the ground, you do the, deal this huge amount of damage to um, enemies on the ground. Yeah, geysers are a great way to do a slam immediately instead of having to kind of like prime yourself for it. You can hop on one of those and just immediately move off and slam someone into oblivion if you want to. Here's another example of, of how the levels are formed by low gravity in Borderlands per sequel. You're able to do these massive leaps and bounds and uh, really you have a lot more freedom as a player that the scope of travel has uh, increased so much. And we're able to use the air boost by venting some oxygen. You're actually able to go even further by propelling yourself forward or even higher. Yeah, and it's cool that we have these abilities. They obviously come with some cost on the oxygen meter, uh, but we get plenty of ways for you to get that oxygen back. You know, we've got uh, oxygen canisters that drop from when you kill enemies. Uh, we have the air geysers. We have uh, we have other like cracks in the ground that air can come out of. They won't give you that jump, but they will give you back your oxygen. We also have oxygen generators. And even like certain Oz kits will allow you to create an oxygen bubble whenever you do a slam attack. Now these enemies that we're fighting at the moment, the Kragans, they're some of the moon beasts. Uh, they're essentially these, these moon rock monsters, but because this is Borderlands, they absorb elemental attributes as well, and these ones have absorbed cryo damage. Uh, we have a lot of liquid methane around uh, this area of Elpis, and uh, they've kind of inherited those abilities, and they're kind of uh, doing cryo damage towards you. Um, but you have the ability to, to kill them, but what's really interesting about these guys is when you kill them, they actually shatter into two smaller Kragans. Yeah, so you might start off one-on-one -on -one and feel like you've got a pretty even fight, but as they break into smaller groups and become more numerous, you might have a really big fight on your hand. Alright, why don't we uh, try and show off the Wolf and Saint here, Wilhelm? Alright, so Wilhelm just deployed Wolf and Saint. Those are his two drones. Uh, Wolf is going to go out and cause some, you know, some trouble. Saint's going to stay fairly close by to replenish uh, Wilhelm's shields as they ever drop. Now our Wilhelm player is pretty pro, so you know, might need to get a little bit of a more challenging fight for him. You can see these beautiful ice pa particles. Uh, with the new cryo element that we brought into the game, uh, you can freeze and shatter any, any enemy, and uh, depending on which angle you attack these guys from, uh, they're actually going to float off into a low gravity in that direction. If you, if you slam down an enemy while they're frozen, you're actually going to split them in half and watch their uh, ice chunks float off. Yeah, that's really cool because um, the way that they shatter is always kind of customized to like whichever way uh, you hit them. So it never really gets old. It's always different each time. It's really fun. Now, our current objective uh, in this particular level 
is to redirect uh, some liquid methane. We need to get to the Drakensberg, which is this derelict Dahl ship where uh, we've been informed there's a military AI that we can use. Jack wants to build up this robot army. He needs this military AI to use it. So uh, we're currently trying to redirect this methane to cool off uh, a lava river. Now we were just fighting in the Kraken, but over here you can actually see that some of the scabs uh, are actually riding them, which is kind of which you know you got to watch out for it because you have two enemies attacking you, and whenever you kill one of these Kraken riders, you might get a couple of little Kraken riders coming up. You see, Wilhelm was also using these jump pads. So along with the oxygen geysers, we have these Dahl uh, jump pads which are placed throughout the levels, and some of these shoot you straight up into the air, and other ones kind of propel you really far forward. Again, uh, if you manage to chain some of these together, you can jump really, really high and do a slam, which does a massive amount of damage. Look at some of these guys, you'll see that uh, some of these scavs have the sort of orange bubble over their head. That's their oxygen bubble. Uh, that means that if you crack that bubble, then they're going to take oxygen damage because uh, they're not able to breathe. Uh, which is a really cool way because you can kind of do a hit and run. You don't have to worry about necessarily about finishing them off if you're taking too much heat. You can just wait for them to asphyxiate. But some of these guys also have shields and air bubbles, and so they have, they're a little more of a stronger fight. You have to watch out with those guys because they're more dangerous. So you can see that's an example of one of the Dahl uh, jump pads, which shoots you really far forward. And here we have some of the, the Dahl jet fighters, uh, and they're, they're going to fly around and uh, try and do a huge amount of damage to you. And Wilhelm is doing pretty well. Yeah, that was a spot on hit. That was really good. Oh, oh no, but you fell off the side. That's okay because we've got plenty of jump pads. Uh, we have a lot more verticality in uh, Borderlands now than we ever did before. Uh, so there's, um, there's not necessarily any one way to get to this objective. Uh, really, all you have to do is just find a, either a jump pad or a way to jump uh, from, from platform to platform. Yeah, something really great about the, the low oxygen, it allows you to traverse these maps really, really quickly. So, you c because you can make these massive leaps and bounds and you have these jump pads, um, you're able to get from one end of the map uh, very, very fast and uh, really get an edge on the enemies. All right, now it looks like we just leveled up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put that skill point in uh, Vengeance Cannon. That's really interesting because um, you, if you take a certain amount of damage, uh, Wilhelm responds with the Vengeance Cannon and can do a great amount of damage within a pretty generous uh, period of time. You have about 30 seconds um, of, of, ac of action yeah, on this. You can come in really, really powerful when you're under the pump. Yeah. So you can see now we've act we're actually redirecting this uh, liquid methane, so we should be able to uh, go over and try and freeze this lava lake. Alright, so once this pipe connects, we actually have an, another route on how we can get to the next objective. You could just go down to the ground if you wanted to, uh, but because of the verticality in the free sequel, we can actually continue along this path here. All you have to do is have the option to make the jump, and then you can actually run along this pipe here. Uh, so there's uh, plenty of ways to explore this map and get to pretty much anywhere you need to get it. Yeah, it's really, see, it's really cool it. as well. Uh, our level designers have built the map so, uh, especially when you're playing co-op, you can have uh, each player, they can approach each of these uh, sites from different angles. So we could have taken that pipe all the way along while Athena went down uh, by the ground and went over to the, um, by the jump pad. Yeah, people that are especially fond of sniping uh, should keep an eye out for these kind of opportunities because um, you get a superior angle from which you can snipe off those oxygen bubbles or just do just a bunch of damage in general. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to continue along this way, and Athena's going to continue uh, on the ground, and they're both getting that. She's going to jump across this chasm here, and we're going to get on to the next big fight. Yeah, we should be able to ambush these guys by taking them from two different angles. Once Wilhelm, you know, finds a way to jump over this. <laughs> there we go. All right, so in this area here, we've got some jetpack uh, scavs. We also have some guys that are on foot. They actually see a scav that Athena just killed just flying off in the distance. Mm -hmm. And he'll go on like that for quite some time. Yeah, if he still has any life left in him, he's getting pretty beautiful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh, no. Athena's down. Hey, Wilhelm, now why don't you go ahead and uh, revive her using the oxygen? Yeah. So you kind of have these cool you know, kind of uh, tactical decisions. You can revive your downed players faster with oxygen than if you just you know do it the normal way. Uh, but that obviously comes at a cost. But you know sometimes it's really good to get them in the fight faster. Beautiful. 
You can see uh, we have these jetpack scabs, so all of the enemies on Elpis can take advantage of the low gravity just as much as you can. So if you're uh, getting protection behind cover, they can actually jump over and stomp on you and invalidate your cover just like you can them. We really wanted this gravity system to go throughout every single feature in the game. Which is a pretty awesome butt stuff there. Yeah, that was solid. Here's some of our uh, new mini machines that we're just kind of teasing as we run by them, but you can see more about them later on. All right, we're coming into the processing plant now. Um, this is uh, actually where you where you just directed the uh, liquid oh, no. methane to, and it's really important that you do this because uh, we're going to use it to freeze a lava river so we can form a natural bridge and cross over to the dragon's breakfast in the next map. Now this has a lot of enemies in it. Definitely a good time to bring out walking scenes. Yeah, try and use those jump pads to get a hot advantage of the players as well. He's stomped down. He just uh, shocked that scab when he did that in ground pound because of his uh, because of the Oz kit that he has. It's really cool because each Oz kit uh, can have a variety of features on it. Some of them uh, will do you know your basic oxygen extension, but some also add elemental attacks. Uh, some will create uh, oxygen bubbles whenever you do a slam. Uh, there's a lot of layers to them because you know, it's really important to us that our gear um, you know, be relevant and be in an option really cool stuff. Um, obviously, these sort of uh, varieties are really important to us. When we, whenever we added the ice elemental, this also is represented across all gear items. So, you know, you've got it in shield, you've got it in grenade launch, you've got it in guns. Um, and we also have lasers. Uh, lasers support all the elementals, so we, um, we've added even more bazillions of, of gear. Yeah, you can see lines. right here we have an ice laser. So we're able to shoot this beam, this kind of freeze ray, and uh, then we can uh, butt stomp and hopefully shatter this guy. Getting close. Nearly. Uh-oh. The higher you get, the more damage you're going to do. So, very close. Uh, uh, can you just take out kill? Yeah. That's okay, though. It's always next time. So it looks like we cleared out the enemies here. Uh, let's try and get that methane onto the lava river. It is Borderlands, though, so you always have to loot. That's right. Let's take all of them. Over. <laughs> Ninja. That is the ten-year-old boy we hired to help us. You're fired, John. You can see the Drakensberg out there in the distance, so that's our objective. We want to get to this crashed Dahl ship to get this military AI. Once we get that military AI, uh, Jack can put into the loaders, which up until this point had been useless. You know, they're just construction bots, basically. Uh, but once we put the AI in them, we'll be able to weaponize the loaders and reclaim Helios, which is the moonshot facility. <laughs> a bunch of big baddies to have to fight. Yep, they just get bigger and bigger. I really like that he is an ice dragon, but he also has lava inside of him. Yeah, I see that all the time. Yeah, it makes sense. All right, guys, and that's uh, that's uh, our E3 demo. We hope you enjoyed seeing it. Uh, please stay tuned for more pre-sequel news.